Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I have here a struggling Wanda that needs to be rescued and saved. If that's the type of content you'd like to see here, stay here and let's try to check what's happening to this Wanda. Let's have test the plant. Discover what I probably did wrong in the first place because that's probably on me. I've been growing this Wanda for four years. That's the first Wanda that I bought in 2020 and it has been with me for a long time. So if that's the type of content you'd like to see, stay here and watch this video with me. I hope you enjoy this type of content. I posted a poll last week here on my channel asking which type of content you'd like to see and most people voted for trying to rescue or for the struggling Wanda. And here she is, my beautiful plant that's looking so sad at the moment. But hopefully I'll be able to save it. We don't know. So first of all, this is a beautiful white Wanda. I take no ID. It looks like a leopard. It's one of these big Wandas that needs lots of bright light and you need to have space for it as well because they are massive plants. But different from the other ones is the only yellow that I have in my collection. And it's yellow with lots of dots. So that's why for me it looks like a leopard. In Brazil, we have one species of leopard that's called onça pintada. And uh, it's one of these animals that are iconic from my country. And it's an endangered species as well. So I love, I love this leopard so much. And this plant reminds me of it. <laughs> Not just because we make connections when we like something. Not only this produce beautiful blooms. But again, my husband gave it to me for my birthday, I think, in 2020. So it was the first orchid that he gave me. It was expensive because these Wanda's usually, they cost like 50 pounds or 50 euros. They, because of their size and how the flowers look like, they tend to be a little bit more pricey than other orchids. So talking about all of it, when I received this plant, it was a very healthy plant a massive root system but I had no experience with Wanda's whatsoever. Some people decided to grow Wanda bare rooted or in baskets because these plants they are epiphyte which means that they grow on top of trees, tree trunks, they have very thick roots that are adapted to leave hanging or attached to some sort of surface. These roots will usually keep the plant hydrated for a long period of time although it's not receiving lots of humidity. That's why you're gonna notice that your plants are capable of producing super thick roots that are very well established for the environment where these flowers grow. There are tropical countries with a hot climate, but you can also grow these plants in pots if you have the right ratio of air and humidity, because if you offer too much humidity, you may rot the roots or you may have some fungi inside the pot that's not beneficial for your plant. There are many things that we have to consider here. I live in a country that's cold, so again, it's very different from the natural habitat where this plant grows. But inside my home, it's usually intermediate temperature. But as you can see now, I'm wearing long sleeves, so it's not super warm or hot like it probably would be if I was close to the equator, for example. So again, it is different. And I have to be careful because inside my home, it can get very humid. So I can suffocate the roots if I'm not very, very careful. My other Vandas are doing great, much better than this one. However, this one has been sitting inside this pot for four years now. And organic material can easily degradate and decompose. So after four years, even the pH of the environment where these roots are probably different and it's probably not very, very healthy and good for the plant anymore. So again, that's on me. But because I need lots of work and a little bit of moss to repot this plant because it's sitting in a massive pot, I've been postponing it. And as a result, I have a sick plant. So let's talk specifically now about this plant. Just to let you know, I have other videos about Vandas, not specifically about all Vandas, but I think I've spoken a little bit about how to look after Vandas. I will link them down below. This one, we're gonna specifically talk about this situation here and how I will attempt to fix. Just to take it out of the way, 
So let's talk about this massive one. What is happening here? So it is sitting in a massive plastic pot with some ventilation holes that I drew myself back then. And not only that, when you look to this plant, we will notice, first of all, that I have a basil cake. It's very normal for simple orchids when they are struggling to push out baby plants. It's a way and strategy for them to survive. So it's the second cake that these plants push through. I lost the other one, but this one is coming. I don't know if it has any root or not. I'll probably not be able to keep it with the mother plant because we're gonna have to do something on the base of this plant. But just to let you know, there is a tiny, tiny cake in there. And this plant starts to lose all the bottom leaves. Not now, but a long time ago. As you can see, I've been postponing for a long time, but I didn't have mix to come to it. And even now, using, I think, almost all of the bark that I have here, I don't know if I'll be able to fill this pot, but that's fine. So I have all of the bottom part of this orchid looks completely dried. And again, all the, the leaves are falling one by one. Probably I do have some issues on this stem. The stem, I don't know if the stem is alive, or if the stem have dried off. If I had an infection, the roots were not good anymore. So I might, I don't know, some infection that traveled, you know, from the bottom of the orchid is going towards the top. So all of the base of my orchid is dying. And I have some yellowing leaves. They're also going now, that are also falling. I didn't have any blooms. Didn't even attempt to bloom. It attempted to bloom. The last time I noticed that I had a lot of bud blast. So the blooms weren't health either. That's another sign that my plant is not well. On top of that, I can see that the leaves, they are wrinkly. And they are very, very wrinkly. They used to be in a worse case than these. But what happened is it pushed out a root. And I have now one root here, one area root, that's probably being able to kind of hydrate the plant a little bit. So this root is the most important one, the one that's growing here towards the top. Another sign that my plant is stressed is that the top leaves, they are, they are smaller than the bottom leaves. And in a healthy plant, usually they push out longer leaves than the previous leaves. This case is not the case because you can see clearly that I have something going on here that's not beautiful, not nice, <laughs> and we will attempt to save it. Because of the cakey, my idea, my initial idea, just to explain to you how I would address that. I know that I have one root here. So what I personally think about, that's what I might plan is to cut this section of the plant. I don't think the section here below is doing anything for the plant anymore. And it might be that I have an infection here traveling. So I want to remove this part of my plant and I want to pot it closer to this root. However, I do have a basil cakey here. I might push everything out of the pot just to see how the cakey is and try to save the cakey. This cake without mother plant will take like many, many years to mature. Maybe 10 years, who knows? That's long because baby vandas will take long, long, many, many, many years to be able to become completely mature and blue. Require a little bit of patience. That I don't know if I had or not, but anyway, I tried to save it. For this reason, I will remove everything. I'm not gonna just cut this top of the plant. And then it's good because we can check what happened to the roots inside the spot. And we can have we can also check how is the stem below. Let's talk about everything why I'm I report this plant. So I will just turn the camera now. So it's almost impossible to pinch this plant into the frame of the camera. I'm trying to show here you the base because I think that's gonna be the most interesting part to see. So let's try to pull it. It was, oh gosh, so easy. Yeah, not the most difficult thing to do. Everything is dead here. I already know that because I can feel smooshy. I might need to adjust the camera again. 
Oh gosh, it's all dead. Very, very much dead. I hope you can see. It's gonna be difficult to film this, but I will do my best. So I have this massive bamboo stake that I have no idea where this come from, but was the only thing that I found to stake this plant. As you probably imagine, it's quite hard to stake this vanda. I will have a look now to see if, you're, if this is on frame. Hopefully it is. So here is the keiki and the keiki has zero roots. There is nothing that I can do about it. So maximum that I will try to do is, look, everything is dead. Everything is dead here. All the portion here is black. You can see all this black portion. And if I cut, it's very, very much mushy. So I can remove everything. But the first thing that I will do is this. I have my pair of pruners here. I will try to, oh my gosh. <laughs> it is difficult because <laughs> it's like a piece of wood, not the most, and I don't have the best pair of pruners in the world. So, and I don't have many gardening tools like for big plants. I only touch tiny orchids. But I'll get there eventually. So as you can see, okay. So it's yellow, and I think it's complete. I think it's dead. So the centerpiece of the orchid here is completely dead. It's perfect, which means that I can keep cutting it towards the top. But before I do that, one second. My tiny, tiny cakey. I will keep it attached to this piece of wood here. But I'll just remove all of these roots, all of these dead roots. I hope you can see. Okay. So what I have now is a tiny piece of the cakey attached to what's left of the orchid. Uh, I don't have much hope, I'm gonna be very honest. But I didn't want to remove it completely. I don't think it's feeding it, you know, much. But I'll keep it here. I might... I don't know what I'm going to do with this cakey. If I will place it inside a humidity chamber to see if it keeps some... Helps the leaves to transpirate a lot and then push out roots. Who knows? Maybe that's a good idea. I will let you know if it survives in the future. But now, let's return to the Vanda. Uh, this low part is, the, is not making any difference to this plant anymore at this point. So let's try to remove more of this. Let's see what is happening down here. So I'm gonna go here towards the top and let's keep cutting it. It's quite scary. But there is nothing much that I can do for this plant at this point. This is still not looking good. Not happy about it. The good thing about it is that it's difficult. So there is not going to be any infection going up from any of these because this is dead as well. So here comes to the point that I don't know what to do anymore. If I should cut, keep cutting it or if I should avoid and just pot it. So I have my response here. I'm not gonna cut anymore because from the moment that I remove these sheets here, I probably cannot see, but there are some green buds here and here that could be a root tip. You know, something's coming from this section of my orchid. So I do have live portions here. I'll keep all of this part. I'm not gonna remove any of these. And I'm gonna pot it up somewhere around here. So it's very important that these roots keep hydrating my plant. So I intend to put these roots very close to my mix because I don't know if this plant will push new roots here from the base or if this plant will push out more aerial roots and I need roots to keep hydrating my plant. So now it's time to pot this up. I'm going to be very honest here. I could go with a smaller pot and see what happens. 
or I can just reuse this massive pot. I don't know what to do yet. Let me clean here and I'm gonna come with the pot, a clean pot, and then we can talk about what to do. One second. It's the most difficult reporting to show you guys because of the size of everything, but let's try. So that's all the moss that I have, but I think it's gonna be more than enough and I'm gonna go with the same pot. I clean it, it's clean enough for what I need. It's a massive, massive pot. I think it's like probably 30 centimeters or so. I do add a layer of moss at the bottom just to help me with the watering, but it's gonna be basically, because the pot is massive, even when I try to <laughs> Uh, just create some sort of layer there. It's quite difficult. But then I need to add lots of and lots and lots of bark. As always, I'm gonna just keep layering until the top. The only challenge here, in my opinion, is the size of this pot because feel require because the windows are so big. Sometimes you require as well, lots of material, not supporting me. It's not cheap, you know, especially... The bark is a little bit cheaper than the moss, but I use much more bark than I use moss, and the moss lasts for a long, long time. Especially this dry moss, this New Zealand's Hagner moss, so usually, because of my violation, I can go with one pack for a long time, but not a bit bark. As you can see, this is all gone. I need to add more bark. And I hope this new mix will do the trick because everything is fresh here. When I threw the old mix away, it was very, very old and degraded at the bottom. It became almost like a black mud. <laughs> You know, when the organic material is almost all decomposed, so that's how it was looking. Not pretty, not pretty to see, so that was basically my fault. Let's see if my blood will fit in here. I think so. I think that's perfect. That's all that I need. Something here. I'm scared I need it to, to touch the mix because Otherwise, I will have only organic um, aerial roots and I need the mix to hydrate my plant. Otherwise, it will depend on me soaking it and it doesn't make any sense to pot my plants if I will keep soaking. Let's see what happens this time. I'm hopeful. This orchid is beautiful, but the problem or the part that I needed, as you can see, a ton of mix to report it, plus time, plus no excuse, but already giving a ton of excuse. My own fault, that's what happened when you keep just postponing reporting one orchid. So orchids, especially vendors, they are heavy feeders, so, and this is a massive plant, I will add is no release fertilizer across the pot because it helps me. Not always I have fertilizer at hand and uh, sometimes I just go to my bath. If you wonder how I water out these big plants, I usually go to the bath. Oh gosh, microphone is pointing to the mix. So I usually go to the bath and give these plants a shower. So that's what I do. Let me add the last layer of sphagnum moss here. To be careful to not suffocate the or cause any sort of root rot or a stem knot in the case here. Now I will cover everything with bark. Would be amazing to have this root all inside the pot, but I'm not gonna achieve that now. It's okay, it's all good, all fine. So I use a whole pack of eight liters bark here. I will clean this up, the mess up, and I will come back when I'm done so you can see the plant properly potted. And let's discuss what else should I need to do with this plant. And there we go. My massive vanda is finally repotted. It will take this plant a long, long time to bounce back. 
I don't even know if it will survive or not. Uh, there are a greater chance that it has some disease and then it will not produce more roots. Who knows? But these roots give me a lot of hope. I believe that it will be able to hydrate my plant and keep it alive, fingers crossed. When you talk about infection, especially because I cut the stem, there is a slight chance that I have some infection on the stem that can travel up and kill the rest of the plant. And the fact that I cut the stem and it will be in a humid environment, I do have some small chance of infection in there, but it was pretty woody and it was mainly that. That's the reason why I'm not too worried about this stem and I didn't add glue or any other substance to the base of the stem. I'll let it be. Fingers crossed it was the right decision. I will only know with time. I have to keep a close eye to this plant to see how it is developing, to see if it's pushing through new roots or not. I did see some knobs on the base of the stem. So I think that region can push through roots. It might not do, it might do. We will have to wait and see. Another thing is I need to water this mix. It's completely dry at the moment. I will add some water and mainly to this massive root here because when I water it last time, it was greening, was becoming green. So it is hydrating my plant and maybe I, it may push out other aerial roots that would be great as well for this plant in the future. Oh, who knows? <laughs> it will take a while for this plant for me to bloom again and to be as tall as it was. So Vandas, they have, they grow, but it's not as quick as some other plants like Dendrobiums, for example. It will push through one leaf after the other and then the stem will become tall and tall. And one day she's gonna be a super taller plant again, but not now. It's okay. I have patience. I can wait. If it survives, I will be so, so happy. And just to conclude, as you saw on this video, when you have a very mixed organic material, it can definitely kill your plant. So don't do like I did. <laughs> if you can, repot your plant. If you do that sooner, your plant might be healthier for longer. And more than that, I hope you learned something with this video. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. And I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.